Hey, this is Dave with OC Astronomy, and um, I'm trying to document the fact that uh, I think I've found, finally, a uh, problem that has been plaguing me for a couple of years since I bought the CGX mount from Celestron. It's a problem uh, that has uh, come up a lot of times in the winter, and what happens is the... Um, uh, as the axis is trying to guide uh, on RA or on deck, um, it will be guiding along okay, and you can follow the graph, and I, I use Maxim, but you can follow the graph in PhD2 or whatever, and you follow the graph, and it'll, all of a sudden, the it'll have to make a really big correction, and then it'll bring the star back, and it'll keep going, and then it'll make another big correction, and it's always in the same direction. And uh, what I did to try to diagnose this is I took apart my uh, right ascension axis and deck axis uh, worm blocks. Uh, I was also having, I, I thought it might be the backlash. I thought it might be something in the gears. Uh, and I thought it might be the, uh, the worm gear. Uh, any number of things that could be in there or, the, or maybe in the motors. Um, but whenever I took apart that worm block on the RA in the deck, I just swapped them, and uh, I'll show in some video here of, uh, of how you can swap them. They're essentially the exact same. The Both axes are the same. The only difference is that the right ascension has a, uh, a little encoder. It's a little wheel on it with a slot, and then it has a little uh, gate that it goes through, and every time that the wheel turns around and the slot is, is open, that's the index for the RA axis. And so that's how it knows uh, like how to do pet correction and where the RA axis is located. Uh, it uses that little uh, slot on the axis. Uh, I swapped them because I wanted to see if the problem followed from one axis to the next, and it did. Uh, luckily, I was able to move it. Uh, the better of the two uh, was now on the RA, and... It would guide okay pretty well for a long time, and every now and then, though, I would still get that little hit uh, where it would drop. So this has gotten to be a real problem, and so it was worth addressing. Um, whenever I took out those axes before, um, one thing I noticed was that they were pretty stiff. And so I got a hold of the guy that does the uh, hyper-tuning and asked him if he could hyper-tune anything on, on these and, and get, the, get them work better. And... He said that he didn't do any work on the CGX for various reasons, um, but that he could sell me some uh, better improved uh, ceramic and steel uh, uh, hybrid uh, bearings. And so that's what I did. I ordered the bearings, and I'm now trying to replace them. And so I took off. Uh, I wanted to show the problem here. This is just the block. This is the uh, deck axis. And... Uh, this it will turn, but it's really stiff. I'm, I, I have to force it. It won't spin at all. Uh, this one won't. I mean, it's, it's very, very stiff in the cold. And then this is um, the one that used to be my RA axis, but I had swapped over to the deck. But now this, I, now that I have the little wheel cog off for the motor, I physically can't turn. Uh, this is so frozen up. Uh, I can't turn it with my fingers. You can see this. Um, I don't know if you can tell or not. It's not not even turning. It would turn when I had the cog on it, and I could use a little bit of the torque from that uh, cog, but without it and the shaft just on here, uh, this won't even turn. So m I'm showing this problem, uh, and I'm trying to document a solution for it, which is to uh, remove the bearings that are on this shaft and this shaft, uh, same shaft, different ends of the shaft, uh, replace those with the better bearings, um, and then reinstall it and hope for, hopefully it goes away. Uh, and the guy that does the hypertune said that one of the problems could be this retaining ring. And so this is an appeal, uh, to anybody that's, that's having this problem and your thing is out of warranty. Uh, don't mess with it unless you have to. Um, I would suggest if you don't have this problem of little trailing stars, uh, hopping, um, then don't mess with it. But my problem was this is so frozen up that it just wouldn't, uh, it just won't work at all. Uh, the other option is uh, you could send it in if you're under warranty. 
but if you're for some reason if you're say you're located in australia you're far away you can't send it for warranty um, or you just don't want to send it to celestron i would understand that um, or if you feel handy and you want to do the work yourself then this is what you could do so um what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this retaining ring i'm in my home shop i couldn't do it uh, where my observatory is because uh, it's cold and uh, from watching one of the hypertune videos i see that uh, they use a uh, or they did on the c gem mount uh, on the instructions for that they had the same retaining ring and they would uh, the guy said it was uh, they had some sort of glue that's in there or loctite and that makes sense that they put that in there but they've uh, the problem is they've over cranked this down and tightened it too much to where it won't spin and uh, or it's it's hard to spin and so I'm trying to replace it so I'm gonna have to try to I may use a, a blowtorch or some heat a heat gun or something and heat this up to where I can hopefully break that glue loose and then I have to use a, a some kind of spanner wrench on this and here and here to be able to span over the top of this uh, and hit those and be able to, to put enough torque on it to break it free um, once I get the glue loosened up I hope and then um, I'm gonna press the bearings out the way this works it looks like that holds in this bearing then this bearing if you notice that side there uh, right there is bigger around than this side and so it looks like there's like probably this aluminum is stopping the bearing from going through all the way and then this this screw is tightening it down and keeping it in there and uh, so I'm hoping that whenever I undo that screw I'll be able to take it out I may have to whack it with a, a mallet or something to get it out um, I do want to mark the shaft if I can somehow on where the bearings are sitting in relation to the the spacing so that I get the spacing right um, although with the, with the worm gear being a worm if I'm off one way or the other it shouldn't really matter as long as I can adjust the uh, the uh, adjust how far it presses in I should be able to adjust the tilt and get it to where uh, what you want is you want the middle of the worm gear to be uh, pressed into the bearing uh, or not the bearing pressed into the gear so that the worm gear is right here in the middle uh, and then it'll make good contact and you want it to be parallel uh, like a tangent to that gear um, I was able to just use very minimal heat. I would just went around it a couple of times with a blowtorch from a, a distance and just kind of warmed it up. Um, and then I have this tool here, which is a uh, it's a interior tool for a car auto. And then I was able to go in, put this in a vise, and very carefully with downward pressure uh, break it free. And as I'm turning it, I'm seeing a little bit of kind of a gummy looking gunk on the thread. So they did use some sort of thread locker and whatnot, which is understandable. So here's the uh, the threads. They look still pretty clean. I guess there's a little bit of stuff there. You can see where maybe they just used a smear of glue or Loctite, just enough to hold it. And don't blame them for doing it. Um, so I'm gonna replace that in there, um, tap them back in. There's a couple things I noticed. When I uh, loosened the retaining ring, um, I was able to move the RA axis um, and, it, and it spun freely. Uh, and then um, I think that that is the core issue. And so I'm very hopeful that I'll be able to uh, to put these back in there and get it to perform like it, like it should. All the load bearing is being done by the shaft and the bearings. And that's just, just, just there as a, you know, to keep it, keep it steady. I guess there is some torque being put on as the as this turns against the gear. You have the weight of the uh, you have the weight of whatever's on that axis that it's trying to turn. That would be pushing against this screw because you're going to have the weight uh, on the axis is going to push the the on the shaft against the gear here, and so the weight of that's going to be held up. And I guess at the end of the day, the only thing that's holding that weight up will be this retaining ring uh, so it does need to be in there good and tight um, but not too tight to keep it from having some play so if it gets any tighter than this uh, I'm gonna back off the retaining ring um, 
and I probably will put a little bit of Loctite myself in there now that I think about it so that so that it won't work itself free. Um, all right, job done on one axis. I'll do the other and then we'll install it and see how it goes. I wanted to actually measure the guiding performance or just the performance of the mount uh, and see if it's um, if if what I did corrected the problem and if it did then I'll be proud of myself and I'll post this video and if not you'll know you'll never know because this video will never see the light of day but I'm hoping that what I did solved the problem so we'll check it out and uh, last night I was able to uh, successfully guide using my new camera setup uh, as shown in the previous clip and uh, I was able to get good performance on the RA. It was a nice kind of steady uh, curve with no big jumps in it. Uh, and then on the on the deck, it was kind of a nice smooth uh, one-way kind of curve. Um, and then that was corrected and it was able to do that.